morning, everyone. For those of you that don't know me, my name's Carl Forbes. I'm the Group R&D Director at Zara. I am. Uh, it's great to be here talking to a bunch of people about technology and innovation. I, I, um, one of the things I, I, I thoroughly enjoy about working in Inkjet is the fact that, to me, it feels like there are so many organisations, so many companies that all work together really collaboratively. And I think you know, the technology is probably something like, I don't know, 30 to 40, maybe 50 years maximum uh, old right now. But it still always feels to me like we're on a, a bit of a bleeding edge of innovation. There's always new stuff happening. There's always new markets that we haven't yet broken into. So yeah, re re really pleased to be here talking to you about some of the stuff that we've been doing regarding innovation. Um, what am I going to be talking about? I'm going to be talking about um, a lot of things that we've learned over the last 12 months where, where we think we can use some of our technologies that are already proven to do something really disruptive within the graphics market. It won't surprise you that the guy from Zara is standing up here going to be talking to you about viscosity. Uh, but but let's, let's sort of start with a bit of an introduction about what viscosity is and relate it to everyday things. Viscosity fundamentally is how thick a substance is. And the scale that we use for measuring viscosity is centre poise or millipascal seconds. Uh, you can see some everyday products on the screen there that help you put some numbers against some things that you currently have a feel for whether they're thin or whether they're thick. So we start with water. Uh, on the centre poise scale of one, water is quite clearly thin. You pour it into something, it flows very quickly, it runs, it fills the, 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 the vessel. We move on to cream. Cream is about 20 centipoise. Uh, I think from our perspective, we'd consider cream to still be fairly thin. Um, when you talk about inkjet, cream's actually sort of fairly thick already. And we move along the scale, olive oil, 65 centipoise. Olive oil starts to do something really interesting when you get to that temperature and, and, and that, that um, helps communicate one of the other impacts of viscosity. When you pour olive oil into a pan, it sort of stays where you put it until you heat it up and then when you heat it up it starts to flow. So viscosity is affected by temperature. You get to the far side and you start to get to some things that I think we'd all consider really thick. Maple syrup and honey. You try to squeeze the bottle, it's quite hard to make them come out. They're quite clearly thick. Let's talk about how that relates to print heads. Uh, so in the printing world Typical print heads can handle fluids of something like 5 to 40 centipoise. And again, remind yourself where cream or olive oil sits on that, so it gives, gives you something in, in, in your mind to put that into perspective. When we look at a lot of the print heads out there, 40 centipoise is already really quite thick and very thick. Uh, a lot of the print heads that are capable of jetting 20 plus centipoise are actually those print heads that are based on Zar technologies. What can we print at Zara? We can print 100 centipoise. We can print 5 centipoise. If you want a fluid at 5 centipoise, you can still have that. But we can also print fluids at 100 centipoise. And I should add that's 100 centipoise at jetting temperature. What that really means is that the fluid in the bottle at room temperature could be something like 1,000 centipoise. The amount of times I've stood here and said this and people think it's a trick. So it's not a trick. Here's a video. And for those of you that came to ours, our open day yesterday, you would have seen this live. We did some clear demonstrations of this. This is a 90 centipoise fluid at 50 degrees C. And here we are showing you that's what the fluid looks like. It's really quite thick. And this is a standard Zar Nitrox printhead. You can just about see the stage moving up as it gets to the right height for the printhead. You can see the printhead on the right hand side there. As the station moves through, you'll see it goes past the UV lamp, which gives a nice little flash, and it comes back. And then my colleague Nick, who many of you met yesterday, will take the piece of paper out and you'll see that we've just actually printed something on there with a 90 centipoise fluid. We really can do it. Printing ultra-high viscosity fluids for us isn't new. We've been doing it for probably something about five years now. And what we find is that where an industry isn't familiar with digital ink jet, then, then they happily accept that maybe you can jet 100 centipoise fluids. They, they don't have the sort of constraints and the, and the, and the, 
and the misbelief from previous. So they come to us and they send us the fluids and we jet it. And so over the last five years, we've done an awful lot of work in the 3D printing sector, where quite frankly, if you can have a higher viscosity fluid, you can just pour more chemistry in. So you can create parts that are tougher, stronger, more scratch resistant, more flexible, if that's what you're interested in. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work over the uh, last year or so in the, in the realms of automotive painting. Um, so we've uh, talked openly um, now that we're actively working with a company called Axalta. They're using our print heads to paint cars. And another uh, number of areas that uh, high viscosity clearly helps with from an industrial world. If you want to put some textured embellishment on a substrate, then clearly high viscosity helps with that. The fluid flows less, it stands up um, uh, with a higher aspect ratio on the substrate. But what about the graphic sector? Yeah, I, I used to work at a company designing and manufacturing wide format graphics UV machines and also single pass aqueous corrugate machines. And if a printhead manufacturer had come to me and said, hey, you should really use my printhead, it's got high viscosity. Uh, I would have said, I don't really think that helps me. I don't see how viscosity really helps me. I care about color. I care about definition, I care about throughput, I care about reliability. I don't care about viscosity. But the reality is that a whole host of stuff that we've learned over the last year probably tells me that I would have been wrong. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to run through some slides sharing some of the information that we shared at our open day yesterday. And as I go through, I'm going to give a bit of a shout out to, to some of the people in the audience who've helped put together some of this work. I mentioned earlier that one of the things I really like is the collaboration. So I, 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 I'm really proud to be able to stand here and say this isn't just Zar saying this, this is other people who've really helped us. The first slide I'm going to show is some work that uh, our colleagues from Marabou have been doing. Marabou um, have taken the concept of ultra high viscosity and they've created a UV graphics ink set. Now, I mentioned earlier that in the graphics world, you want to print colour. You want wonderful colour densities, you want a wonderful colour gamut. And really the colour comes from the pigment in the ink. So why not just put more pigment in? Well, it's difficult to put more pigment in, because if you pour more pigment into the fluid, then it starts to settle, it starts to sediment, it starts to cause problems in the print head and the ink system. And one benefit we have is that we have the high recirculation flow that goes right next to the nozzle. So we don't have any sedimentation in the print head or the ink system. Uh, but if you increase the viscosity, you can absolutely put more pigment in. You still maintain a lovely distribution of pigment within your fluid. And that's exactly what Marabou have done. You'll see the images on the left hand side printed with Zar Nitrox. This is with a standard UV ink. This is a, 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 tw a 25 centipoise ink at jetting temperature. The images on the right hand side are, are taken from the UV ink set that NASDAQ, uh, sorry, Marabou have developed, which is about 50 centipoise at jetting temperature. And because it's 50 centipoise, they've been able to put twice the amount of pigment in it. Of course, the second you put twice the amount of pigment in it, you can say, I'll gladly take that incredibly increased um, colour density, or you can say, I'm really happy with the colour density I've got, I'll just put half the amount of dots down. Suddenly you're putting half the amount of dots down, and that says, well, the cost of printing per product has halved, my machine throughput has doubled, my curing energy that I need is significantly less. In fact, our integration partner no longer pins between, between print heads. They just don't need it with the high viscosity fluid. Uh, and also because we've got high viscosity fluid where we have a significantly more controlled dot spread, the quality is better. So UV graphics, high viscosity ink, 50% less ink per item, double the machine productivity, significantly less energy to cure, and an improvement in print quality. What's not to like? Uh, 12 months ago, my colleague Graham Tweedale stood up here and announced the launch of the Tsar Aquinox. And uh, yeah, one of the things that people instantly came to us about was, you've launched a water-based print head that can jet fluids up to 100 centipoise. And we've been doing some really interesting stuff over the last year on that. We very, very quickly um, uh, realized that uh, there's some really exciting stuff that that enables. And we were mindful that what I'm about to show you is quite disruptive. And the second you start to talk about something that's really disrupt disruptive, you get a whole host of questions and doubts and skepticism, and surely that can't be true. 
So what we've actually done is we've done a piece of work where we engaged with um, uh, NASDAR, so the, the NASDAR team are here. And we also um, uh, worked with a university. We worked with Swansea University. And Swansea University have done some independent verification about how does high viscosity help in the water-based printing world. <laughs> Swansea did a whole host of tests and measurements. Again, for those of you who were open there yesterday, you would have seen some of this already. But Swansea fundamentally found that if I just increase the viscosity of the fluid, I'm not adding more pigment, I'm just increasing the viscosity. When I'm printing onto a primed corrugate board, I can significantly increase the colour density if I use a high viscosity fluid. With a standard viscosity fluid, I very quickly hit saturation. I put more ink down, all I'm doing is making the substrate wetter, the pigment is soaking away, even though it's a coated board. With high viscosity, the colour levels they were finding were really quite significant. Uh, I think the quote from the guy from Swansea yesterday was, this is, this is hitting flexo levels of colour density with digital water base, which is unheard of. Of course, you don't have to have improved colour density. If you don't want colour density and you're happy with the colour density you've got, well, Swansea's results say just half the amount of ink you print. It's not soaking into the board. It's not pulling all the pigment away. You can half the amount of water-based ink you're printing with. And again, I sort of know the benefits of that because um, You'll all be very familiar with water-based printing right now. You, you, you print uh, in something that's about this big and then you dry with something that's about this big and the energy usage of those dryers is monumental. Uh, you know, a sustainable solution, water-based printing, not so sure right now. Uh, there's a print samples from, from Swansea. Uh, the left-hand side shows uh, standard, oh yeah, we call it low viscosity, it's 12 centre poise. It's probably a standard, I think would be fair to say. And the different squares are, are increasing ink lay down. So they're just printing more and more ink. And you can see the high viscosity uh, just to the right of it, where the density that they're getting is significantly higher. So yeah, final slide from me. Um, again, go back to my days when I was a print integrator, thinking about which print head should I be using. Are there any benefits of ultra high viscosity when printing graphics? Yes. Increased colour density, halving the ink usage, significantly lower energy to dry water-based inks, significantly lower machine costs, half the cost of the dryer. Don't worry about pinning between the colours and also with it an increased quick quality. Again, shout out to Marabou and, uh, and Nasdaq who are in the room. If you've got any questions, then please catch me later or, or, or those teams. Great. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Give them a round of applause.